Hey everyone, how's it going? Cloud here, and welcome to my guide on the Firemaker's Curse quest. Now, for this quest you need the following requirements, so there are no actual quest requirements for this one, um, but you do need these skill requirements, level 74 Firemaking, level 76 Constitution, and level 64 Agility. So, since the skill requirements are needed to start the quest, neither of those can be boosted, so you have to have the physical level. You're also going to need to be able to defeat a level 160 char, um, I'll speak about her in a few moments. Um, that's it for requirements, now onto the items. So the only items you're actually going to need is some inventory spaces free in order to collect stuff during the quest. However, um, as there's a boss fight and quite a few different activities that involve you losing health, you're going to need plenty of food. Um, also, as there's a lot of navigating around, weight reducing clothing is quite essential. Now, because of Char's style of attacks, um, armor is actually going to be no help in this quest. That doesn't um, exclude items such as like capes and rings and necklaces, that kind of thing. But actual physical armor that's going to weigh you down is going to be more of a hindrance rather than a help. Now for the actual fight against Char, because you're not using armour, um, you're going to be um, navigating around quite a fair bit, so you're going to really want to go for a high accuracy ranged weapon, um, that's good at uh, hitting quite fast as well, so quite a speedy weapon. Um, so I found it quite useful to use the dragon darts in this quest, um, obviously you can choose to go for a higher version of the darts if you want, or you can go for a completely different uh, style of weapon, but you really want a fast, high accuracy hitting weapon, as it's not so much about the damage uh, that you'll be doing against Char, it's about how successful and how quick you can hit her. But we'll speak about that properly just prior to the main boss fight, so don't worry about that too much for now. But enough about that, now on to the quest starting point. So we are currently at the Eagle's Peak Lodestone, which you can access via the Lodestone network, and to start the quest we need to head south of where we are now, and you'll see a group of fire makers gathering around together, and you want to talk to Phoenix to start the quest. So when you speak, a cutscene will take place where you'll be introduced to all the fire makers and they'll explain to you their desire to find the long lost fire making knowledge which came to them in the dream in the caves next to the entrance they're surrounding. They will ask you to protect them as they go through the caves and you'll agree and then formally begin the quest. So, upon entering the cave, you will enter a room with several red fires. A flint will give you a pitch can which allows you to create fires in front of you without logs and grants two experience points for each fire made. You may also right click on the pitch and choose the make fire hit option and this will create um, a fire where you're actually standing. If you make a fire in the wrong place, simply right click the fire and you'll see the option to stamp it out. Now unlike regular fires, you cannot stand on or walk over these fires, and also they burn out faster than normal fires. So your first order of business is to light the fires so that you create an arrow pointing out of the cave. Um, now what I'll have uh, displayed on the video is a little sort of like icon in what it needs to look like, and basically you want to obviously um, keep lighting the fires in the relevant uh, spots to make it into this uh, shape when you've uh, finished doing it. Now if you take too long the fires will start going out so it's best to just keep sort of preparing to keep moving around and lighting the fires in the correct spots until they're all there together, um, otherwise if you take too long they will all start going out one by one so just keep sort of going around in a certain formation lighting where needed until you've done that. So when it is completed a cutscene will occur where the characters will join you in the middle of the room and the ground will begin to shake and everyone will fall through the floor into the next room. So the second room will be dark, so you'll have to light the fire pit next to you to illuminate everything. The fire makers will be scared about being trapped and of the monster attacking them. In the centre of the room is a fire making journal chapter 1 and after taking it you'll have fire making journal compilation number 1 in your inventory. Another cutscene will then occur with a spirit, Char, confronting you in the group and again extinguishing the fire. When you relight it you'll see that Phoenix has been killed because Emmett became possessed. The spirit says this is part of her game and she will allow you to pass through to the next camp but you must identify who she has possessed to prevent any more deaths. And then you want to continue down the open tunnel. 
Now the third room contains yet more red fires in another pattern that is in the journal and the journal contains guide images to complete the shapes as you advance through the caves but obviously I will keep showing you guys on the screen what shape you're going for. So again, like you did for the first fire puzzle, you want to complete this following puzzle uh, and again obviously keep doing it in a way that you're not going to get stuck and sort of keep going around so if the, any of the fires start to go out before you finish, you can quickly go to them and relight them. Once you complete the pattern, you'll trigger another event where Char will begin dropping large boulders around the room. Whilst dimming the lights, you must avoid the boulders as they will fall on you and hit as much as 900 damage. You want to collect these and add them to the rock pile at the east end of the room to create a pile that you can climb in order to reach the next exit. Char will be dimming the lights so you have limited time to do this. So now you'll be in the fourth room and you'll need to light the fire to illuminate everything again. The fire makers will rejoin you and you want to grab the fire making journal chapter 2 to add it to your compilation. This will then trigger another dialogue where you can gather more information from Char by going through the various dialogue options. You can then pick a fire maker who you think is possessed and tie them to the pillar. If you pick correctly no one will die when Char next dims the lights. The first person to be possessed is Twig which he gives away by both his exhausted stance and not being cowardly anymore. So click on the pillar closest to the fire and choose twig to tie him up, relight the fire and then proceed to the next room. If you choose the incorrect person, Flint will be killed. Now, the fifth room contains two differently coloured fires, red and yellow, arranged in the pattern of a fire, um, with the red on the outer layer and yellow on the inner layer, and this room also contains red powder and yellow powder, which will allow you to change your fire's colour. A total of four yellow fires and five red fires need to be lit. So once again I'll have the puzzle solution being displayed on the screen so you know what you're going for. Uh, and the easiest one with this, uh, if it works out like that, is to go for uh, the yellow fires first and then the red fires. But obviously be wary that if you take too long you could get trapped in there and may have to restart the process. And obviously to make the relevant uh, coloured fire you need to use the relevant powder on your um, lighter and then you'll obviously make the correct coloured fire based on which flames you've uh, used or which powder you've used for the flames. With this one, because the fires do burn out quite quicker uh, in this particular puzzle, it may take you a few attempts, but if you just basically go for the same sort of method each time, you'll get used to where you're going to be clicking and what option to click, whether you put the make fire here option or light fire, um, and then eventually you will end up making the fires look like the pattern. So upon completing this puzzle, Char will summon a wall of fire, and you want to run for the gaps in the wall so you do not take damage. After surviving two different walls of fire from random directions, you then want to proceed to the next room. So in this room, the lights dim after a short time, dealing 50 to 100 damage every few seconds. Lighting the fires postpones this effect, so if you come close to dying in this room, you'll be rescued by the fire makers and restored to full health, but if this happens, any activated pillars will remain uh, inactive. So this room is like an agility labyrinth puzzle, you need to push pillar switches to clear the path through to the exit while lighting fire pits to keep the room lit to avoid extra damage. You must jump between the pillars immediately after a small burst of lava has splashed or you'll be hit for some damage and obviously food will be recommended for this room. So go to the west, jump in as far as you can, light the fire there and then push the pillar. It will show you that the pit to the far east can now be lit, so you now want to head to the east pit light it and push that pillar then head towards the west pit again but just before reaching it go north and jump to the pillar that has appeared in the center and push the pillar there go to the east to light the pit and then push the pillar there go back to the center pillar then go east and push the flame switch Go back towards the centre pillar and continue to the pit to the west. Light it and push the pillar. There are two large stones that come down from the ceiling if you don't run fast enough under them. Push the pillar on the platform east of the previous pillar and after that you gain access to the last line of fire pits. There are weak floors in some areas so make sure you don't stand on any ledges that don't have ground beneath them. Go to the northwestern pit. Light it and push the pillar, the path to the exit will now be free in the northeast corner of the room.
Now there are small cutscenes that show what happens when pushing the pillar which makes it quite clear what to do next so that usually helps out quite a lot. Now you can be hit um, with high amounts of damage quite frequently so be prepared to lose a lot of health for this room. So in the seventh room the fire making journal chapter three will be picked up which will add to your compilation after which you'll have another conversation in char uh, and you'll have to decide who is possessed. The second person possessed is Sarah which is made clear by her failure to mention Vulcan even once during the time in the room. So again, tie her to the pillar and move on to the next room. If you decide it incorrectly, Isis will be killed. So once again, you now need to complete a pattern. You need to fill in the gaps between the red fires to make two solid red lines and likewise for the yellow fires. This will produce a pound sign pattern. Blue powder is provided for this puzzle, but it doesn't actually need to be used as there's only five yellow fires and four red fires that will need to be lit. So as usual, as it's tricky to complete the pattern fast enough, a method is to light the red fires first and then go for the yellow one straight after, going for a similar technique that you did for the um, fire pattern one. Um, again, I've got the puzzle solution being displayed on the screen for you so you know what you're going by. And again, just obviously um, be one step ahead where if you make note where the first fire is you light, you may have to come back to that one uh, to relight it before fully completing the puzzle. Obviously with this one be careful not to get yourself trapped as obviously the formation of the fires could mean you get stuck if you don't choose the correct option when choosing the uh, lighting of the fires. So after finishing this pattern you'll be immediately accosted by a large complete line of flame due to Charles regaining strength. You must run to either side and stand against the walls in order to let the fires slip past while you hide in a small gap. Afterwards the tunnel will open up again. So in the ninth room you'll see a grid similar to the pattern puzzle I'm shown to you. You must survive in the room until the bar at the top of the screen is filled. On the wall are nodes which will create temporary walls of flame that will help you survive but will also prevent you from crossing them. Char will put you through a tutorial of sorts demonstrating the various flames she'll send to you but since she's feeling a bit cruel you can still take damage during this trial. So since the camera angle can't be changed during this puzzle, it may be helpful to close the chat and inventory panels to give you access to all the room if you're struggling. So these are the different balls that will come towards you. Red balls will drift slowly towards you to hit for light damage if they get close. White balls move a bit faster and will explode for moderate damage should they catch you. Orange balls can set any line they touch on fire, same as your own walls, but if you happen to be standing on the line it will hurt you. Blue balls will lazily float about creating a trail of flames that will constantly damage you if you stand on them. All of the balls of flame will eventually vanish if they haven't hit you directly, but orange and blue balls will leave behind the same type of fires that blue flames leave. So the balls will spawn in four waves, with each wave containing more of them at the same time than the previous one. The idea here is to use the flame walls you set to prevent the balls from reaching you. Um, however, if you're not fast enough or on the wrong side of the node when you light it up, you may accidentally trap the ball on the same side as you. So a few general tips are to stay near the middle of the walls most of the time since the balls always spawn at the four corners between the walls and the center. And they will not hesitate to go off if you're on top of the spawn. Try to avoid the orange flame walls since they'll end up eventually trapping you if you're at the short end of the room when they set fires. When you're hiding behind a wall, lure the balls over to one side and then create a wall perpendicular to the one that you're using to block them so that when the first wall goes out you'll still have something to protect you. Lastly, the balls that try to chase you will still hurt you even if they're behind a wall if they're close enough to so make sure you leave yourself a bit of space. Again, with this one, um, as long as you sort of go for a kind of smart strategy, you shouldn't take too much damage, but methods of healing will be quite useful for this puzzle, allowing mistakes and lessen the chance of failing the puzzle and needing to restart. So room 10 is another party room where the rest of the fire makers will rejoin you. Take the fire making journal compilation number 4 and you'll have to again decide who is possessed. The person possessed this time is Twig again and he gives it away saying he was born with the name Twig. If you decide incorrectly, Lena will be killed. So for this next pattern puzzle, the pattern is in the shape of a torch. You won't need any yellow at all, just complete the blue surrounding it and the red all around the pattern. 
So as with previous puzzles, I will have the puzzle um, solution being displayed on the screen for you so you can see what you're going by. Now just before you finish lighting the last fire, take note of the fire pit nearby because instead of throwing fireballs at you, Char will dim the screen and then you want to immediately light the fire pit in order to avoid taking too much damage. So you then want to take a torch from the pile and proceed down the tunnel. So you'll be forced to walk the entire way. During this time, dark tendrils will claw their way out of all sides of your screen. Um, smaller screen formats are recommended for this bit as um, it will help you get away from the tendrils. So to get rid of the tendrils, you have to ward them off by uh, left clicking them close to the edge of the screen. Um, failing to ward them off in time will result in a bit of damage, but don't forget to keep walking while this is happening as uh, you want to escape through the open door as soon as possible. So after lighting the fire, take the fifth journal and the person possessed this time is Emmett. And again with this one, if you decide the wrong person incorrectly, Twig will be killed. So Char will warn you to prepare yourself, um, if you need to head back to the surface to resupply on food and make sure you've got a fast hitting accurate weapon with you. Armour shouldn't be worn as I mentioned at the beginning since this will only increase Char's maximum hit and you want to go for weight reducing gear to conserve energy if required. So this battle is a safe battle meaning you'll be expelled from the arena instead of dying with Char taunting you and when this happens the fight is reset and your stats and life are restored to full but obviously any resources you would have used have been gone. So take the last journal, uh, you then want to go in the last room to meet with Char and she is standing in the cave downstairs. So for this battle there's going to be a lot of running involved so like I said weight reducing clothing is going to be key if you've got things like the explorer's ring which can restore run energy that will be helpful um, if you completed the as a first resort quest it may be uh, handy to go in the salt water spring which will provide unlimited run energy for about 15 to 20 minutes. So Char's hits are based on your maximum life points so wearing armour is counterproductive. Prayers and a ring of recoil do not work in reducing or inflicting damage during the fight so don't bother bringing these items to the fight. The rapid heal, redemption and fortitude prayers may be helpful though should you run out of food. The damage you inflict is calculated by how many fires you light with your pitch cam. So therefore it works well to light as many fires as you can in order to accelerate the fire. The lit fires will die out naturally. So it is recommended to put the pitch count on your ability bar because then that way you can um, press the keys on your keyboard while moving around so then it's less click intensive. So periodically Char will rage and glow white. During this time she'll be invulnerable and will inflict heavy damage which can be more than 8000 should you be with melee range. Um, so you want to be well away from her when she's doing that. She will eventually cool down which will happen faster if you lure her into the water. The message in the chat window will say Char's rage subsides and she'll cease to glow. If you attack Char as soon as the Char rage subsides message appears then you'll have the longest possible time to fight her in which she goes into rage mode again. Now occasionally Char will give off a spherical spark which will also appear as another yellow dot on a mini map. These sparks will do a small amount of damage if they touch you or will give certain benefits if they hit one of your fires. So the spark benefits are the following. So green your hit will have a chance to restore some life points. Blue with each hit you have a chance to slow Char's attacks. Yellow your hits have a chance of extra damage and red puts out your fires. Now like I said it is quite handy to have the pitch on your uh, ability bar so that way while you're running around and keep clicking char to hit her with your range attacks um, you can keep also selecting the key with your pitch. This will then spawn more flames as you're travelling around which will then help increase the accuracy and damage uh, done to char. So when char is down to approximately 50% health, firewalls similar to those experienced in the earlier chambers will periodically appear and sweep across the room and a wall will typically have two gaps where you can pass through to avoid damage. So that will make it a little bit more tricky as you then start to move around that bit more sort of tactically so you're making sure you're not taking too much damage from the walls. 
So overall, this actual battle is not so much difficult, it's just very time consuming. There's a lot of moving around doing and a lot of paying attention to where chart is, where the fireballs are coming from, etc. But the best strategy is literally just to keep running around, keep lighting the fires so you can increase the damage and accuracy that your ranged attacks are doing. And as long as you stay well out of her way when she does her rage form, you shouldn't run into much problems. So once Char's been defeated, she'll lament her defeat and the Firemakers who somehow become free will join you who can speak to Char again and gain some final information about Char and Zaros. Speaking to Char after this gains no more information and then you can exit through uh, the nearby tunnel. This will bring you and the Firemakers to the surface at a cave entrance to the north of the one used to start the quest and then you want to speak to any of the Firemakers to end the quest and get the rewards. So after you finish speaking to them, it will thank you and it will come up with congratulations, you have completed the Firemaker's Curse quest. You are awarded 2 quest points, 80,000 Firemaking experience, 30,000 agility experience, 76,000 constitution experience, the Book of Char, which when activated in an offhand slot, causes a fiery orb to spin round you, igniting any log that you walk or run over, and I'll talk to you about that in a moment. You will have access to 2 new events, a new Firemaker's costume in the Balvazar's Big Top Bonanza, the circus that you can do every week. Access to Char's training cave that can be repeated weekly and you can also pick up one of the four fire creatures, Warming Flame, Twisted Fire Starter, Glowing Ember or Searing Flame with 91 fire making, two treasure and the keys and two hearts of ice. So there we are, quest complete. So overall, a not very difficult quest, just very time consuming as there's a lot of puzzles to complete and obviously the boss fight isn't really going by sort of, oh, what kind of gear you've got. You are literally going by a strategy. And um, so to be honest with you, it doesn't matter if you're using the best um, sort of uh, high hitting damage weapon possible, you're still going to have to follow a very similar strategy in order to defeat her. And as her attacks scale to your life points, necessarily being higher constitution won't be that much more of a benefit to you. So obviously really good XP rewards, obviously this quest is required for a lot of the biggie quests such as um, the World Wakes and Fate of the Gods in order to unlock all the rewards from them. Now the Book of Char that you obtain is quite a handy item um, to use so I'll talk to you a little bit about that because that can help with um, maximising sort of its ability. So as I said um, when you have it activated if you walk or run over um, some logs you will instantly turn them to ash and you'll gain the experience for them. Now to be honest, um, obviously there are no other quests or anything that require much of a higher level fire making level than what you have now currently, um, so you may not be that interested in levelling up your fire making, however for those who are wanting to go for like 99 fire making this can be quite a handy strategy. Um, so since dropping a log requires a right click option for each log, more, dro uh, more logs can be dropped by using a beast of burden. And this is accomplished by filling a beast of burden's inventory with logs and then dismissing it. And upon dismissal, all the logs will be dropped in a single stack. So in order to maximise the experience, this is what you want to do. So if you empty your inventory and go to a bank which permits fire lighting, such as Edgeville Bank, you want to withdraw and equip the Book of Char, but don't activate it yet. Withdraw one summoning pouch for the desired beast of burden, um, such as like a terror bird or a war tortoise. Um, summon a beast of burden and then fill it with the inventory of logs using your beast of burden bank presets, or you can use obviously the withdraw option and deposit. You want to position the beast of burden so that the creature's southwest corner occupies the space where the logs are desired, because basically wherever they're standing, when you dismiss them, the logs will appear on that. 
dismiss the Mr. Burden, and then you want to repeat this about three to seven times, as many times as desire, but obviously um, bear in mind the longer that um, you leave the logs there, the more that eventually they'll disappear and can be seen by other players. So if you're doing like magic logs, for example, people might start trying to pick them up. Um, but when you have dropped uh, the logs as much as you want, um, activate the Book of Char by right clicking on it, and then you can run repeatedly over the various stacks of logs. This will then keep instantly lighting them all, so you'll just gain this mad amount of experience as you're doing it. So obviously once the logs are dropped they will become visible to other players in a minute so try to begin burning the logs before one minute passes. Once the logs are dropped they will disappear after three minutes and once the book of chart is unleashed the effect will be active for two minutes. So obviously that requires a little bit of practice to get bang on right and obviously you'll see in the uh, video clip I showed you I didn't get it exactly how I wanted but basically the idea of it is the more logs that you've got on the floor and that if you keep getting your character to walk over that same spot you will basically burn every log you can't just stand on the pile of logs that won't work like that you have to actually be moving so you could have the logs in one big line if you want it or like I said have them on the same spot and just keep walking on and off it um, that will work for either way. So yeah, some of you may not even choose to use the book, but it's quite a handy uh, item to be able to use if you wish to go for sort of some fast fire making experience. And obviously uh, with the book of chart, it can be activated only once a day, I believe. So yeah, overall, I don't think you'll run into any problems following my guide. However, if you do get stuck, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll help you out as best I can. If not, thank you for watching. Please make sure you like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share with your friends. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.